the 16th chapter, beginning with the 13th through the 18th verse. When Jesus came into the course of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I the son of man am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, and or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, by Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that, uh, that upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The security of the church. <clears throat> or the eternity of the church. Recently, I have listened to several sermons of uh, a well-known television and radio preacher who said that uh, the time had come for the end of the church. And don't think that this is all next Sunday night I'm going to be preaching on something else. And I'm not kidding, nor am I fighting. Uh, you are usually regarded as a fighter if you choose to differ with certain people. But I am not fighting, and those who think I'm fighting, well, that's all right, too. <clears throat> but... I do not think that Christian preachers and Christians in general can afford to keep quiet when the very foundations of our faith is being challenged. There is no, no, no type of soldier in you if your cause is being threatened and you lay down in a foxhole and hide. I don't believe that the time has come for the end of the church and I'm going to tell the world I don't believe. If I were on a network tonight if I had shot wave to Germany or even to Russia, I would tell them there that the church is not ending. The church has not come to the end of its age. Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. And the very gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Do you mean to tell me that the church, having been the guardian and having been the dispenser of the following ideas and having, having had the impact upon society that it has had and has come to the end of its usefulness? Did you know that the church inspired democratic government? Did you know that the church inspired religious tolerance? Did you know that the church taught the world the dignity of the human personality? Did you know that the church taught the world brotherhood? Did you know that the church taught the world peace among all peoples? Did you know that the church taught the world charity? Yes, Did you know it was the church of God that taught the world justice, mercy, perseverance, truth, fair play? Did 
Did you know it was a church that taught the world what is meant by the kingdom of God? And what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is the reign of God. The reign of truth. The reign of justice. The reign of brotherhood. Do you mean to tell me that an institution that has developed man to the point of why he is in the 20th century do you mean to tell me an institution that has made the human being more human than he ever has been and that it has come to the end of its usefulness? For man isn't as charitable as he might be. Man isn't as just as he might be. Man is not as merciful as he can be. Why don't you pray with me? Man does not practice fair play as he might do so. The church has still a great job to accomplish. It's not nearly through. It has brought the human being a long way. It has brought the kingdom of God a little closer. But it's not nearly through. And Jesus has guaranteed its eternity. So when it gets through here as a church militant is going to move up a little higher and become church triumphant. Pray with me if you please. Upon this rock I'll build my church. That's what Jesus said. Upon this rock not upon as many suppose Peter uh -huh. because in Hebrew and in Assyric uh -huh. the name means rock or little stone not for that reason for Peter was too fickle Peter was too impulsive to be the foundation of God's church not upon Peter, but rather upon that great declaration of divine truth that Peter heard. Thou art the Christ, Son of the living God. That's the foundation of God's church. Jesus Christ. That's the foundation of his church. Jesus Christ. You notice that Jesus said, who do men say that I am? Seem to have been interested in a kind of consensus of opinion. You around among people, you hear people express themselves. You're a little closer to the men in the streets. Who do they say I am? One said, well, Lord, some say that uh, you are uh, John the Baptist reincarnated. Others say that you are Elias or Elijah. Uh -huh. Some say that you remind them of the other prophets. Uh -huh. You have the conviction of a John the Baptist. Uh -huh. You have the courage of an Elijah. Uh -huh. The fire of a Jeremiah. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. And you are possessed with characteristics similar to other prophets. Yes, sir. But now, these folk out there are a little remote. You're closer to me. Uh -huh. yeah. You're within my inner circle. Uh -huh. What is your impression of me? Yeah. Uh -huh. Who do you say I am? Uh -huh. Peter, impulsive and quick to speak, said, possibly by divine prompting. Uh -huh. Thou art the Christ. Uh -huh. Thou art the Christ. Yeah. Now I've heard somebody around here in town say, but they are the savior of the world. <laughs> but I want to say notice tonight, I have only one savior. Yes, sir. And there are a lot of other 
people that I know in town have my same Savior, and that is Jesus Christ. I hear people around here saying that nobody but so-and-so can deliver me. Well, the folk that they think that can deliver them can't deliver me. The man that delivers me is a man of Calvary, son of the living God. I don't believe you're praying with me. Upon this rock, I don't think, Christian, that we can keep quiet on this. I think you're a mighty coward child of God. That uh, when your children and when your husbands uh, and your sons and daughters are hearing this thing and you have no other message to the contrary, people believe what they hear if they don't hear nothing else. The church will live on. And if the people will support me, I'm going to keep on preaching that. That Jesus is the Christ. And Jesus is the Savior. And Jesus is the Son of God. That is the Immaculate Son of God. In a sense, I am a Son of God too. But I am not the Immaculate Son of God. Pray with me if you please. Pray with me if you please. You'll notice that this institution that Christ built is an exalted institution. He said, up on this rock. A lot of people have become so indifferent and so cold and so negligent that they have lost their sense of appreciation for the church. Of course, when they get in trouble, they run to the preacher and the church. But if I were you, I wouldn't wait until I get in trouble. I'd come to God and come to the church when the sun was shining. You don't think too much of a person who only waits until he gets into it to think about you. Pray with me if you please. The church is an exalted institution. And it's on something. Its foundation is on a rock. It exalt men. Those who come within the orbit of its influence will be exalted. It exalt men mentally. It, in, it exalt them uh, socially. It exalt them spiritually. In other words, it exalt their minds. It exalt their society. It exalt their souls. For it's up. And it's on a rock. I'm glad that Christ used the rock as a symbol of the foundation of his church. For it suggests something firm, something steadfast, something immovable, something immobile. You understand me? A rock. When you think of a rock, you think of something firm. And that all of these winds and doctrines, these strange isms may come, but the church is on a rock. And we remain there. Upon this rock. I'm glad he chose to make the foundation of the church something that was symbolized by a rock. I'm glad he didn't use the soil because scientists tell me geologists tell me that where we are today on dry land was once a sea and what is now a sea was once dry land i wouldn't like to have a foundation like that that is as changeable as that as the foundation of the church of which i'm a member i'm glad he didn't use the sand but Jesus said the house that's built on sand 
When the beating rains fall, when the floods come, that house will fall. Try with me if you please. I'm glad he didn't use the water, for the water is too wavery, too billowy to be the foundation of his church. But upon the rock, upon his word, upon his expressed word, the Son of God, upon that word that became flesh, has he built his church. And the very gates of hell shall not prevail against him. Hell may throw wide its door. And hell and its hellish imps may come down from the barracks of hell and launch their mighty satanic fury against God's church. But when their onslaught is over, the church will stand. I wish I had somebody here to pray with me. The church will stand. Pray with me if you please. Because the church is the mother of truth. It's a mother of charity. It's a mother of justice. It's a mother of fair play. It's a mother of brotherhood. It's a mother of the idea of the kingdom of God. It has promoted and expounded that idea. It has brought it down and sheltered it and, and, and has remained the custodian of these things through the centuries. And I believe it's going to live on. But the Lord Jesus said, upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Uh, I'm glad that the Lord said, I'll be. He becomes the personal architect of the church. He becomes the personal builder of the church. I'll be. Not that he will let the contract out. I'm glad he didn't let his contract out. I'm glad Peter didn't get the contract to build it. For I'm afraid that if Peter had a built a church, why, uh, when its virtues got on trial, Peter would have denied its ability to come out. I'm glad tonight, uh, I don't believe you're praying with me. Why, uh, that uh, not only did Peter miss the contract, mm, I'm glad that Thomas didn't get it. Mm, for if Thomas had gotten the contract, mm, I'm afraid when the church got on trial, Thomas would have doubted it. Mm, he would have doubted its ability to make it through. Yes, he would have. I'm glad this night mm, that uh, Judas didn't get the contract to build God's church. Mm, for if Judas had gotten it, I'm afraid that he would have sold out. Oh, I'm glad some of the others didn't get it. Mm, but I'm afraid that when the church got on trial, they would have deserted us, mm, as many of you are doing. Mm, for not only did they desert back there, but we have people right here tonight, and people listening to me, mm, who deserted the church as they did in those far off days. Oh Lord, Jesus said, I'll build it. I'll build it. Oh, Lord, I'll build it and make it the old vessel, the old ship of Zion. I'll build it and make it the lighthouse in this turbulent sea of time. Yes, I'll build it and make it a wayside station to weary soul. I'll build it and know about building. Oh, Lord, I don't need hammer and I don't need nails. No, no. I don't need trial and I don't need level. I don't need square and I don't need plumb lines. I'll build it. It was I who spoke the star into existence. It was I who spoke the moon into existence. It was I. It was I. It was I that spoke and the mountain 
mountain stood still. It was I who spoke her and scooped out the sea with the palm of my hand. It was I who melted the rocks like wax and molded them into the earth. Yes, I did. It was I. Yes, it was I. So I'll build it. I'll build a church. And I have confidence in my Lord as a builder. I know he knows how to build. Yeah. And since he knows how, I've joined the church. Yes, I did. One morning, when I was on that boy, one morning, when I'd heard about the church, I'd heard my mother talk about it. I'd heard my grandmother talk about it. Yes, I had. I'd heard the people of God talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. I made up in my mind to be a child of God, to be a member of this old church that many have tried to attack me and bring it down to the ground. But my Lord has his arm around it. Oh, Lord. the ship uh, yes, yeah. 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 I'm counting on him uh, I know the waters are rougher uh, I know the sharks uh, out there in the deep uh, I know the seabirds uh, are lurking in the water uh, but I'm not afraid because Jesus is my pilot yes he is uh, oh This old ship is gonna land one of these moments. Church will live on. Yeah.